Who would like to have a guess what the first ever fake modelled car in CDT history was? You might think it was perhaps one of the returned Lamborghinis or any of the more recently remodelled cars because remodels are a recent thing. But you're totally and completely wrong. In fact, one of the rarest cars in CDT history is a fake model. From all the way back in 2021, I think, it was a version of the Fiat Multiplar, the Spooktiplar. It was just a normal Multiplar, but it was a fake model because... Well, it wasn't one of the multiple variants that we have in CDT, because those are all based on real modified cars. This was totally custom, and therefore counts as a fake model. It was literally just a normal multiplier, still has no interior, and has this sort of pumpkin, scary jack-o'-lantern front light. That's it. But it still counts as a fake model. At least in my opinion. Now that was like three or four years ago. Actually if it was 2019 it was five, but I don't like the passage of time. And now Foxy has done it again. This time with something a little bit quicker. The Gumpet Apollo has been affected by what I'm calling the pumpkin virus. Snappy title. Now, I reviewed a Gumpet Apollo a while ago in Dealership Tycoon. That was a real model and not even like a, you know, altered variant. Just totally real. The standard Gumpet Apollo that you could have bought back when it was on sale. If you had the money, which you probably didn't. But... Here it is again in CDT. And I say again in CDT because this is a variant of the real Gumpet Apollo, which is actually a car in CDT. It's a limited car that was on sale a while ago, and like pretty much every other limited sale car that was on a while ago, I missed it. Because I used to be terrible at collecting limited because I was too busy focused on cars that were in the permanent shop. And now, in my later years, I totally regret that. Especially since I could have got the Pagani Huayro uh, base model, which is now one of the rarest cars, rarest cars in the game. So you can see why I'm annoyed about that. So, a while ago, guy in Germany, Roland Gumper, he makes a car company. And he names it after himself, so it is called Gumpert, which is possibly... The most crap name ever. I do apologise, Mr. Gumbert, but your name is stupid in any country other than your home one. Or ones that speak your native language. Anyway, um... It's ugly. This is a car focused purely on the racetrack. And nothing else. So, it has loads of grooves, bumps, vents, slashes, etc. All with the focus of making more downfalls. And, you can customise it like a game car, if you have the time. So, you know, the suspension is all completely customisable. You can programme the traction control and whatever. It's really customisable. Just, you've got to be able to know at least a basic degree in engineering. Which most people don't. Anyway, there was a few variants. There was Apollo, the Apollo N, I think. And they were all fine. The Apollo actually set a lap record around the Top Gear test track. All well and good, but... Gumpert eventually went belly up. And then they were bought out. And like a phoenix from the ashes... Became Apollo. Which now makes cars like the Evo and the Intensity Mozzioni. Sorry for buttering the pronunciation. And then that's really it. It's a short but sweet and slightly sour story. Just one thing. I don't think that Roland Gumpert, when he was making this car, 
ever envisioned it basically succumbing to the pumpkin virus on one Roblox car game several years after it ended production. Funny how things happen. In the speed department it is by no means lacking. This is a speedy little car. 225 miles an hour top speed as standard. And acceleration is quite good. A, a lot, around this sort of bracket is when cars start getting outright quick. And yeah, this one is no different. Fits the bracket performance perfectly. Nothing more to say. No notes. But I think what takes not the cake, not the biscuit, but the entire bakery is in fact the corners. Okay, I will admit that there is a bit too much well, not a bit too much body roll, a lot too much body roll. But, to be honest, I would rather have body roll and this feel of driving than no body roll and it feel like I'm driving a skateboard. This thing is absolutely sublime. Turns in in the right places. Chassis is very responsive. And quite frankly, I have not had much fun behind the wheel of a car in a long, long time. This thing is brilliant. And it's not even a real model. Very much like a Lamborghini Huracan STO, but uh, turned up to about 27. And in a sort of... How do I put this? Relatively fitting way... It's relatively good at drifting. Still probably the weakest aspect of the car, but by no means a negative one. It can drift. It's quite grippy, and you do get quite a bit of, um... Oh, what is it called? Snapback. When you come out of a drift. But it does drift. Quite well. One of the problems with it, though, is that you do have to get a little bit of speed up every time. And sometimes, because you're focusing on trying to get the speed up, you will end up missing the drifting points and just ending up losing all the speed anyway. It is a bit of a shame, but, you know, it's a free car, so you can probably afford to put some engine tunes on it. Unless you've just joined the game, in which case, no, you're fucked. I'm just kidding. It's fine. But definitely the weakest aspect of the car. Now, the original car was made and designed and bred purely for the racetrack. How will this one, which has been infected by the pumpkin virus, cope? Well, judging from what it feels like to drive and how it's just been throughout the review, very, very well. But... You never know. Here we go. On the line. Come on, get the countdown over with. I want to get this lap conquered. Power. Bit left. No, that was a bit right. I can't tell left from right. I'm sorry. Really smooth through the... Okay. I should have braked earlier. That's my bad. I was too giddy on my own success. Well, not my own success. I've got no talent. It's all down to the car, I promise you. And then... Oh! As you can see by the fact that I actually turned too sharp. Instead of cutting the corner just fine. A little bit of... Um, off balance from the car when I brake steered and brake steered the other way. All leading to a 42.7, which... As you can see, was all down to my own sloppy driving. Every time I drove badly, this car tried to alter that. Which is really good. Just goes to show that often, it is the driver and not the car. Especially in my case. So, should you complete the event for this car? Yes. Simple answer. Yes, it is one of the most brilliant cars that I have driven for free. The event, it does take a little bit of time, and up until yesterday, 
would have helped you with the first Halloween event if you hadn't completed it, but no, it doesn't because the Halloween event ended yesterday. But I will still maintain that it is worth it, and it's even better if you can tune it. So, on that bombshell, it, there isn't really a bombshell, sorry. But I will see you soon with some dealership tycoon content, some car dealership tycoon content, and a new voice that doesn't belong to me. That's a bombshell, so we'll end on that.